Hi everyone, my name's Michelle and I'm Mama Loves UGB here on Flossy, but also over on Instagram as well. Welcome to the Sunday morning briefing. How are we doing? This is Floss Tube number 32. I was hoping I was going to remember having just written it down, but no. And it is Sunday, June the 6th. Yes. <laughs> I'm terrible. I can just literally write it down and then forget completely about it. How are you all doing this week? I have had a really, really lovely week. We have been up seeing the uh, the outlaws uh, up in Northumberland and uh, Ness has had the most fantastic week. She's had such a good time with her, her auntie and her uncle and then her grandparents. It's been it's been so lovely. We had, um, oh, we went all sorts of different places, just, but mostly just spent time with uh, with one another to the beach. And then there's a, a garden centre not far outside Morpeth that's got dinosaur crazy golf. We went to the metro centre. She went on the big trampoline. She went to the slushy shop. She absolutely loves slush slushies. And um, there's a shop in the metro centre which has lots of different flavours of slushies. So she went there and then we went to um, the woods and walked the dog and... Oh, just had lots of like um, pizzas outside and things like that. It was absolutely fabulous. And then uh, we drove back home to the Cotswolds and then from the Cotswolds we drove back to Wales because it's about the same um, as doing it in one go. But as I said last week, it's too long in the car for Ness. Um, anyway, I was driving home last last week. No, yesterday. God, I, I've lost to totally track of days. I was driving home yesterday down the M5 massive long queues on the M5 so I had to turn around go back through Gloucester and join the A40 and then get over that way and I was just sort of going along I had a cookie and then I sort of well there's a crunchy bit in that didn't think anything more of it and then you know sometimes you just sort of put your tongue around your mouth there's a huge bit of tooth missing I'm like I've lost like quarter of a tooth at the back here and I have no idea I've no idea I didn't it didn't look shonky or anything now if I I've always had pretty good second teeth. My first teeth literally just rotted it out of my head, but my my second teeth have always been really good. And I'm like, no, no, these have got to last another like 40 years at least. Don't be, don't be losing them now. So um, yeah, I'm gonna have to find a, well, not find a dentist. I've got a dentist. I'm gonna have to go to the dentist and uh, and see if he can rebuild it. So um, yeah, that, that was just a bit random. Uh, aging is not a good thing. I don't like it. No, I don't like it. Right, I have got a couple of thank yous for some really kind things that people have done for me. And I've got some apologies for things that I should have done but I haven't done. <laughs> and um, and then I will show you, I have got three FFOs, I've got a finish, and I've got a couple of whips. So, my thank yous. My first thank you goes to um, a lovely lady called Lisa, who lives in America, in Omaha in America. And she asked if she could send me something. And I said, oh, thank you, you don't have to, but yeah, thank you, that'd be lovely. And so she did, she sent me a, a lovely package. Um, and there was a lovely card in there. which has got poppies on the front and a lovely message. And she said, I'm sending you something. If you've already got it, don't worry, just pass it on. So she actually sent me, me two things. And she was so lovely and sent Ness something as well. And Ness couldn't believe it. She, she was just so bowled over. So we had to have a look on the map to see where Lisa lived and that she'd sent her a gift. So the first thing that um, Lisa sent me is this little spring, which is so cute by heart in hand. It's designed to fit the heartware stuff. So I'm gonna have to see if I can track some of that down or something, something similar. But you can also put it inside a little cloche like that. So um, yeah, I'm definitely gonna be having a look for something like that, that's so cute. And I don't have a lot of spring things really, or summer. I, I tend not to have a lot of spring and summer stuff, so that's fabulous. And then the thing that she sent me was this, the Vexation Sampler by um, Plum Street Samplers. Now I do actually already have this, but what I'm gonna do is because Lisa said um, that I can share it, what I'm actually gonna do is to kind of match Lisa's kindness, I'm gonna add the threads to it, and then I'm gonna give it away as a chart from Lisa and the threads from me. Um, so if you would like to enter for this, remember you have to be over 18 so that I can have your um, address, don't say giveaway, all the normal sort of jazz. I'm gonna pick it next week, so it'll only be a week this time uh, and if you want to enter for it if you can include the word let's say maths 
Maths, M-A-T-H-S. So we're going to go with the British way of talking about maths, with an S on the end rather than math. So M-A-T-H-S. And then you can win the vexation sampler with the threads as well. I'm not going to put a fabric in it because people like fabric completely different. Some people might want to do it on Ada, some people might want to do it on a really high count, some people might want to do it on 28 count. So that's why I'm not going to include fabric. But it's such a beautiful, beautiful stitch. And then the thing that she included for Ness, and like I said, she was absolutely over the moon, was this. Uh, a needle point so Ness can have a go. And it's got all of the, the wools and then it's got a little printed plastic canvas on the back so she knows where she's got to try and try and sew and yeah so she was so so delighted with that so thank you so much Lisa that's really uh, really made my uh, my weekend opening that yesterday when it when it came so thank you and the other thank you I've got is to a lady called Tara and I'll put her Instagram underneath and she contacted me a little while ago and she said, I really enjoy watching your videos and I've gone right back to the beginning and I've noticed that the first few haven't got any notes on them. And I was like, hmm, yeah, they probably don't. I don't think I knew how to do it then. And I haven't gone back and done them. And she said, well, I've done them for you. As I've been watching, I've been making the notes. I've typed them up. And would you like them? And so I was like, oh, that's marvellous. Thank you so much. So um, she's emailed me the notes for the first few shows that I did. Like I said, when I was completely clueless about how to do it myself and so um, all I need to do is take her emails and paste them into my video so that they will have notes as well so um, thank you so much Tara that is that is super kind of you for doing that and um, I'm sure everybody will appreciate it now my apologies my apologies the first one cheers I thought I'd have a nice little glass of wine seeing as it's nearly the end of uh, end of half time. My first one <clears throat> is to those of you who won a chart in the Puntini Puntini giveaways last week either on Instagram or this floss tube. <laughs> I've heard from everybody I think I've got everybody's contact details but as you can see I have as yet to put them in the post. I bought the envelopes uh, when I was up in Newcastle so I've got everything I need I just need to marry the two things together so they will be coming out to you next week so sorry about that and I have one more apology ah and this is quite a big apology I think last week I did a uh, freebie chart that I'd been sent and it centered around a designer now the first thing I did I think was butcher her name <laughs> and then I don't think I really gave her her dues for being such a phenomenal woman and so what I want to do just for a couple of minutes now I've chosen another one of her charts as a freebie and just to give you a little bit more information about her and actually as I say give her a dues for being such a phenomenal lady so the first thing I did her name I shall put it down below uh, I actually googled her and I googled an interview with her because I was hoping that someone would say her name and lo and behold I found an interview that she gave in which she said her name and that how to pronounce it so her name is Susan Aki, as in hockey, but without the her. So um, Orky, I think maybe Orky. See, I'm still not sure. It's, yeah, it's not what I said before. So um, Hockey, Orky. Oh yeah, Orky, I'm going to go for Orky, Susan Orky. Um, it's English, you see, we don't know how to pronounce these things. And she is a cross-stitch designer for Aurifil Threads, and she's also got lots and lots of quilt designs and quilt books and things like that and I'll pop her Instagram below um, it's yardgirl60 so yard grl60 uh, and you can go on there and you can look at all of the things that she's done she's you'll see probably a very familiar wall with lots of red samplers on it um, which has been on social media a lot and so, um, yeah, just go and go and check her out a bit more. She's got like nearly 49,000 followers on Instagram. So it would seem that I, once again, am late to that particular party. <laughs> but never mind. And the, the freebie that I've chosen, you have to put a picture up here because we're out of printer paper. You see, I go away for a week and it all goes hell in a handbasket. So 
it's called Love Letters and it's a long band sampler style uh, red sampler which I think is absolutely gorgeous so I will put the link down below I'm actually going to link you to her Instagram if you then go to her link tree on Instagram and scroll to the bottom you'll find all her designs for Aurafil and you can have a look and there's some, some other ones there the ones that I showed you last week but there's also some other ones there so again my apologies to Susan for, for underselling her somewhat Right, we're 10 minutes in and I've not even showed you any stitching yet. So um, I'm going to grab the things that I need and then I will show you. All right, I don't normally waffle for that long at the beginning. Right, three FFOs. So I think I told you a little while ago that I had had some bespoke frames made for three samplers from Cotswold Art Supplies. Um, and I got my frames this week and I framed them up today. And uh, I'm going to show you them. So the first one I'm going to start with is Ada Bilson by um, Well Cyrus Naps and there is Ada and she is stitched on uh, a seraphim fabrics and I'm gonna have to put the name across the bottom because it escapes me no I can't remember and the frame I chose is actually I don't know if you can see almost like a grey, a grey walnut with a silver trim or a silvered, it's not a bright silver, um, in the middle. And then the frame itself is quite deep and it has got a bit of, I don't know if you can see at the top, a bit of texture to the finish as well. And so I stitched her using either the called for threads or very, very similar colourways. And this chart was gifted to me by a lovely friend that I met on Flosstube or through Flosstube and Instagram. Um, so thank you. There we go. So that's Ada. Sorry, she's just blown out a little bit there. And the reason that I took her to get her um, or to pick out a frame for her is because she's not my normal colourways. I didn't really, I couldn't really picture what would go as a frame for her and so it took took a bit of puzzling out as to what would go for her. And the same is true of this next one and this next one is Maria Dale and she is from the very first issue of um, Antique Sampler and Needlework Quarterly magazine um, of which I've got the CD-ROM. So, this one I can tell you she's stitched on 32 count old stationery by Seraphim Fabrics and she uses um, a gentle arts colour which is blue spruce or spruce, spruce blue one of the two it's one of those ones I can never remember which way around it goes and this is the frame that I chose for her and I thought I wanted a darker frame but every time I put a darker frame next to it, you couldn't see the green of the thread. It just made it look very, very dour and very solemn. And it is a little bit with the quote, but this kind of natural frame with just a bit of a gold uh, liner to it. There, super pleased with that one. There she is, see if I can get a decent Instagram grab. <laughs> Try not to show, show my uh, crook crooked tooth. And then, you can't see it's right at the back. This is my last one. This is um, Mary Catherine Harris by Erna Hiscock. And I'm just making sure she's sitting straight in the frame to show you, because I haven't actually put the back on this one properly for a reason. So this is Mary Catherine Harris. And again, I picked out a frame for her. Now the reason that I haven't put a back on this one is because I was going to show you just a little a little thing. So if I can just press it and get get it open. I was just going to show you a little tip about um, pinning. Because I pin mine, okay, and don't do anything with this back bit, provided it fits in the frame and you can't see it, the back could be having a right old party, I'm not worried. Now, sometimes it's really hard to get 
these straight and sometimes it takes several goes and that's why I won't actually fully seal those frames just for a few days yet just because the, the linen will kind of settle a little bit and then the more you look at it sometimes you think oh yeah that's not quite straight or I want to just tweak that a little bit so I always leave them just to almost like block in their frames before I actually seal the back so this one gave me quite a bit of trouble um, because my piece of picture this plus had a real sort of keft in it, it just it was just it just looked wonky um, even when I was stitching on it so what you can do if you're trying to make sure that your edges are straight if you just get a piece of ribbon and you can work out where this first line of stitching should be compared to the edge and if you just get a couple of pins what you can do is pin your ribbon in at the top, measure at the bottom, pin it at the bottom as well, she says, faffing around with it, pin it at the bottom in as well. And then what you can do is, because that gives you a straight line, you can use that straight line to sort of tug your fabric a little bit, either a little bit tighter or loosen it a bit to give you that straight line. And then once you've done that side, leave that on and do the other side. Because what will happen sometimes is when you tug one side, the other side can go a little bit out of whack. Now I haven't pinned this, so hence it is moving. But um, if you do that, then that can help you, oh, it's warm in here today, help you to get, get those straight. So that is my three FFOs and I cannot wait to get them up. I've got enough now to do a sampler wall. I just need a wall. I can have to try and work out what wall, which wall I'm going to put them on. Um, I've got the landing. I could move my um, Cuban art pictures from the landing. But the trouble is it's quite narrow and so you don't get to stand away from it. And there's some room down in the living room but it's by a window. So I don't know, I'm going to have a play around and see if I can get my sampler wall done so I've got two no I've got another finish to show you and then I'm going to show you the two whips that I've been working on this week sorry I just had to open the window then I was having a right power surge <sighs> it's happening in there my teeth are falling out and I'm having a granny so god knows what's gonna happen next week right this is my finish now I had a lot of people ask me about this little chart um last week and I can't really tell you anything about it other than it's by Little by Little, it's called Quaker Blackbird and it's designed by Cynthia Bradford. I bought it from somebody who was de-stashing on eBay so um, I can't tell you where to where to get it from other than just have a look on eBay, see if it comes up. And now I'm going to let myself down now. After doing all that framing and I clearly had the iron out, I didn't use it on this piece. <laughs> so let's just put that behind there so this is just a little Quaker sampler that I did and the reason I got this actually was because I liked the shape of it and then when I stitched it and I actually had a look on Instagram and I found a couple of other people who've stitched it and they've left the border off and I like it better because actually when you look at the border it's not a very even shape. It looks like it is, but it's not a very even shape. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna make this into a needle book because Brenda was showing her needle books and I was just sitting there with my eyes wide open like that. And um, all the work that her lovely finisher had done by putting um, woolen strawberries inside and by doing like little strawberry attachments. So. Uh, you can bet your backside that's what uh, that's what I'm going to be doing with this. Comes with a free dog hair as well. Specialty fibres. So yeah, that's that one. I managed to get that one finished. There's not a lot of stitching in that one. So um, I got mm, about an hour or so while I was up there. And um, Ness had gone with her auntie around to her auntie's house which isn't too far away just so that she could see her cats and feed the dog and all that sort of stuff so I got a little bit of time to do it then um, 
and then this is the other one and I'm gonna have to put a picture up of the chart here because I've forgotten to bring it um, and it's the little perforated paper piece that I was that I was working on so I worked on this a little bit while I was up up north and that's as far as I've got with that one now I'm gonna do a little bit of unpicking because as you'll see from the chart picture that I just put up um, there is actually two colors of orange in the cat and mine are too close you can't see the contrast between them you can a little bit but I want it to be a little bit more of a contrast so um, yeah I just started stitching in it and then as soon as I could I cut down my perforated paper so just I've got a bit of a smaller bit to work with so yeah this will become my school stitch uh, my lunchtime school stitch so uh, I quite enjoy stitching on perforated paper things at school as I have said before and then the other thing that I worked on this week was my blackbird weekend stitch and I decided to work look I haven't even finished the stitch what a late I can't, hang on hang on there we go lazy um was this one which I'm stitching with uh, Nikki Noodle and it's from Agnes Platt's The Strawberry Sampler and it's the one on the front, the B-Skep, which I think quite a lot of people are doing. I've seen quite a few people um, on Instagram. So I did a bit more on this one. And so I've did the, done the B-Skep and I'm pretty close to getting the house, well, the body of the house done and then I've started on the roof. So I've got another window to go. Um, and Nikki has done a bit of recharting um, for us. Um, so where it says there, the bee, his labour, a chant, his idleness, a tune. She has um, recharted it so that labour is spelt L-A-B-O-U-R, so that it's, it's correct for us Aussies and uh, the British folks so I can't wait to finish this one off it's supposed to be well it was my one of my mania starts and it should have been finished off in May technically um, but I went a bit a bit astray on the hedgehog sampler which I've nearly finished um, so this one I think what I'm going to do with this one is I'm just going to keep bringing this out on the blackbird weekends until it's finished so I think probably um, I'm not going to do any more on it tomorrow just because I want to do my Rachel Howells because I'm going to work on that one um, for the love of Brenda on a on a Sunday. Um, I'm sorry, I just thought I saw a loose thread. Um, and then this one, I think, yeah, I'll just keep on with it until it's done on the Blackbird Sour Weekends. And that's everything I've got for stitching. I have got some amazing haul. I'm going to start off with the slightly less amazing haul and then I'll go to the amazing haul. Not that this isn't amazing, but it's quite amazing. So, um, that one. So this is Caroline Amelia Trowell, which has been released by Brenda Gervais and you can get this from Patchwork Rabbit. I love this. I just love the, um, the layout of it. I think it's really... I think it's quite unusual. It says, beauty's a blossom that soon fades away, but virtue's a flower that will never decay. Isn't that right, eh? Beauty's a blossom that soon fades away when your teeth fall out. <laughs> so there we go, there's that one. I haven't got any anything planned anytime soon for that one, but, um, but yeah. And then, and then and then, now I'm gonna have to look back through my messages and see if I can find who told me this. I've got feeling I know who it was but I'm going to check and they told me that in Aldi they had some chopping boards and I just bought a couple of chopping boards and I went and had a look and I was like oh they're funny shaped ones I'm not not that first and then I was in Aldi again today and they had the, the, the chopping boards so I had another look at them and I was like that's a pumpkin that could be a pumpkin so I'm going to paint the green leaf there or the green stalk and then I'm gonna sort of bring round 
and turn it into sections and I'm going to make that as a pumpkin board to put a piece of Halloween stitching on and they were what were they 7 99 and it's either 7 99 for the two smaller ones which is what I got or 7 99 for the bigger one so I got the two smaller ones so I'm gonna have a go and see if I can make it into a pumpkin now I'm so excited by this and I'm as excited by the back of this as I am by the front now I like to keep an eye on eBay for antique samplers and quite often they go for really big money occasionally somebody will put one on a buy it now and sometimes they'll put it on an offer and so this one was on a buy it now but make an offer so I made an offer which I think was a bit cheeky and um, and I got it and this is Mary Ann Appleby now I don't know how much you're going to be able to see because it's got glass on the front but let me come a bit a bit closer so there's Mary Ann Appleby and you've got this amazing tree in the in the middle there could be an apple tree and these two big pots of flowers and you've got this gorgeous border around the outside and there's lots of birds and dogs and um, app, uh, fruit baskets and all sorts all sorts there and it says Mary Ann Appleby wrought this this in the year in the ninth year of her age 1832 and I've had a good check over it and it's in pretty good condition. The edges are a little bit um, dirty and you can see that from the back. But I'll read you the verse because this is what really attracted me to it because it's, um, it's not a very common one that you see. Um, it says, shrinking from the cold hand of death, I too shall gather up my feet, shall soon resign this fleeting breath and die my father's God to meet. And then it says, titles may uh, set a gloss upon your name, uh, upon our name, but virtue only is the life of fame. And it says virtue. I'm gonna have to check and see whether that's just a misspelling or whether that's something that appears in, in other samplers. Now, I think this sampler has been framed for a very long time because this is the back and there are bits obviously the, it's very very fragile on the back but there are bits where you can kind of lift and you can see all the dirt and the pins just don't look like they've ever moved off the backboard so I'm gonna have to get a little bit of advice about what to do with her obviously I want to stitch her and chart her but I obviously want to do my best by the sampler as, as I can now, this is part of the reason why I was attracted to the sampler, because of this paper that's on the back. And I'll try and read you some of what it says on the back. And I'm going to have to look, because it's in, the, in a very difficult light. So it says, um, at the top it says, The Rescue Society, 79 Finsbury Pavement, London. And then it starts off, long and dreary evenings, the poor and destitute with their cold chilling blasts are once more upon, upon us, calling with their calling our increased efforts of Christian philanthropist in seeking to combat the misery and suffering wrought by sin, poverty, ignorance and other causes. And then it talks about um, such efforts are now, un nowhere more needed than in seeking the rescue of poor outcast women or the salvation of girls in danger of becoming so and so it talks all about these um these poor outcast women um and they want to raise 1500 pounds before december the 31st now this is a newspaper from 1892 or a, pr a printed um piece from 19 from 1892 and uh, there's a big section there about the friendless and the fallen. Um, I'm not friendless, I might be fallen, but I'm not friendless. Uh, so there's all sorts of things to 
to read and look at on there. And I have to say, I was attracted by the back, as much as the back as I was to the front. Um, I've had a look for Mary Ann Appleby. There's a couple of candidates. Um, one has got a full kind of history online. One, not quite so much. Um, so I'm t I, d I don't want to get tempted into going for the one that's just got the full history online because um, it might not be her. I've been trying to find some connection to 1832, trying to see whether either of those people had a death in the family in 1832 or whether something might have happened that sort of um, made, th made them stitch that particular, or made Mary stitch that particular verse. Um, but neither of them have so far. But I have found a Mary Ann Appleby who when she was 68, went into the workhouse. Um, and so I was trying to see whether I could tie the workhouse into the back because it's not it's not too far off the time. So um, I don't know, a bit more, bit more digging to do, but I love it, I absolutely love it. So I will reproduce her. Um, it will be free if I ever, well, when, if and when I get around to doing it. It'll be if, not when. But I'll um, I'll share her because she's she's so lovely. Um, yeah, there we go, Marianne Appleby. And I love the spelling of Appleby as well. It's not the most common one. Apple and then B. So there she is. Plans, 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 plans. I've always got, ooh, Mary, Mary, sorry. Um, I've always got loads of plans. Always got loads of things in my head that I wanna do. Stitch Camp. I've had so many people who have tagged me on Instagram to say that they joined Stitch Camp because they um, had heard it from me and they'd gone to um, Sherry, who is Colorado Stitcher, to find out more and they were up for doing it. So my June Stitch Camp piece. I'm gonna have a Barbara Anna Stitch Camp. And I think I did predict that there would be another Barbara Anna Sal coming out and lo and behold, there is one. But the one that I'm gonna do is the Garden of Dreams because it's actually the smaller one. So far that I've got is um, the Dreaming Frida one and the Garden of Dreams, which you can get from Creative Poppy. Dreaming Frida's definitely finished now. And I think Garden of Dreams is nearly finished. You might be able to sneak in and get it. Um, but if not, you'd be able to get it as a chart. So I'm gonna do Garden of Dreams. And when I find what I've done with them, because it's the smaller of the two this month, because I've got quite a few other things that I wanna do and finish up on. I feel I've got a lot going in the air at the minute. Um, and so I've picked out a couple of crafty kitten fabrics that I've had for ages that I got from like a it might have even been when I bought them from her. I was a member of one of her clubs for a short amount of time. Um, so there's this piece, which just looks completely white, but it's not actually, it's pinks and very pale pinks and yellows. So I've got that one, um, and that one's just called January, limited edition. I think it's just gonna blow out. Yeah. Um, and then I've got this other one by Silk Weaver, which I did get um, as part of a D stash from somewhere. Um, and this is a sort of a, a grey purple, which again is getting a bit washed out. So I'll pick between those two and then I'm going to start and finish that one. And then my July one will be Dreaming Frida. And then my August one will be the new one, which I can't remember what it's called, but I'll put a name of it down below. And then I can't think who I was watching. It might have been Annie Joyfield Stitch. I've not had a chance to watch much. Um, a floss tube recently but she was talking about the summer and I was like oh my god yeah it's nearly summer I need to get my backside into gear because I have got this to do welcome summer from the drawn thread I bought this from Chris at the nimble thimble and it came with all of the supplies so the dinky dies sorry I'm just reading off the bank and the needle point um, silks and it came with the fabric um, to stitch it on. Now I'm going to change out that flag either for a Union Jack or I might try the Welsh flag. Um, one of the two because I have done the spring one and so I'd like to have it so it sits above my fireplace I'd like to have it so that I can just switch out um, 
for summer and they don't take long that one doesn't take long so a few days on that one and then I have got my Midsummer Night Dreams sampler to finish the one that I started in Mania so that's my June focus um, so yeah hopefully you'll see that next week but it's been lovely visiting with you today and I hope you've enjoyed um, do hit the subscribe button if you don't already um, it's lovely to have you lovely to have you lovely to see you and I really enjoy reading all your comments so if you want to enter for the giveaway don't forget to do that and I will see you next week stay classy stitches <laughs>